Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to a new episode of on Max Talks Movies YouTube channel. And today, this new show on my channel is now called Max Talks Movie News. You get it? Every week here on Wednesday, I'll be giving you just a heads up on the week's recap news on movie news. What's been pushed back? What is coming out this week? Just the biggest news in the world of movies um, and entertainment, really, and TV shows, really, in general. If you like this type of stuff, please consider hitting that like button and sharing this video on your social media and um, in general to anyone who you think would be interested in these type of videos. If you're new to Max Talks Movies, I do streaming platform reviews, movie reviews, TV show reviews, and now movie, sh uh, uh, movie news, and I do rankings um, every Saturday on a live stream. This Saturday, guys, me and Joe Baldwin, we will be doing a top 15 MCU ranking. Please join us this upcoming Saturday. So we have a couple stories, three stories uh, to talk about, and then we'll call it a day. So the first one, obviously, is Tenet, uh, which has been the center focus of movie news since we've become in quarantine, since the pandemic has started. Uh, the film was supposed to come out July 17th, then it was pushed to July 31st, with Inception coming out July 17th, uh, re-releasing. Then Tenet was moved to August 12th, when Inception then moved back into its place July 31st, and now it has been pushed indefinitely. We don't have a time yet for Tenet. Um, Christopher Nolan has been really pushing for Tenet to be released, um, trying to be the first movie out of the gates uh, when theaters reopen. Theaters were supposed to be reopening. AMC was supposed to reopen July 17th. About a month ago, they made that announcement. And obviously because of how we are still even in a worse situation than we were a couple months ago, um, no movie theaters are open, especially here in Los Angeles. Um, so 10, and also in China at the moment as well, China is now saying that no movie can run over, to, uh, over two hours to be shown in their theaters, which just reopened this week, which means Tenet cannot open in China, um, which is the second biggest market. So they're losing a lot. Not just are they losing on the American market, but they can't really go internationally because China has uh, closed as their time limit is two hours. Tenet is taking around two and a half hours, so that cannot work. And don't get me wrong, I am really excited to see this film. Um, Christopher Nolan is my favorite director, and I really love most, if not all, of his films. Um, I like most of his movies. Um, Dark Knight is one of my favorite movies of all time. So I'm really pumped to see Tenet, John David Washington, really getting this huge, huge type of role. Um, Robert Pattinson is in this, Kenneth Branagh, Michael Caine, um, all these, Elizabeth Debicki, they're all in this film. And I want to see this film badly, but at, the, at this point, you can't force people to go to the theater at the moment. It's getting worse. LA is now on the fringe of just doing a complete shutdown. Um, and at the moment, if you, if you can't have the two biggest markets in the United States, New York and Los Angeles open, where are you going to make your real money? And remember, the movie costs, I think, like $400 million, something like that, to make it. So just to break even, the film needs to make $800 million you know, at the box office. So it, it's going to need a huge opening. Let's say theaters do reopen. They're not getting a hundred percent capacity. You're getting really 30 to 50, uh, really 25 to 30% capacity. So I don't know how it's going to want to recoup its money. It's still going to lose a bunch of money. People are saying, put it on HBO max, but tenants going to lose a lot of money. Um, if it goes to HBO max. So that all doesn't really make a lot of sense. So at the moment, tenant has been pushed indefinitely. It's literally been the news of quarantine for in the movie space. And hopefully it pushes it pretty down the line. I'm not sure we're going to see any movies be released in theaters in 2020, which is really sad. I haven't been in a theater since March 6th when I saw Onward. Um, and we're about to hit on July. Yeah, today is July 22nd, the day I'm filming this. So that is taking around March, April, I mean, March, April, May, June. I mean, we're hitting on four months now where I haven't been in a theater, which is really insane. And Tenet really wants to be that first one. And Tenet is made to be seen in the theater. I don't want this just put on VOD or HBO Max. This movie looks, and, and Nolan shoots in IMAX format. So I really just want to um, really want to realize this in the theater, but hopefully 
theaters can reopen this year, but it's not looking that good. And hopefully next year, Tenant can really provide uh, energy to the film industry when it comes out in, a, in its undetermined time. A big announcement that was made actually 20 minutes before I started filming, I'm really happy we got this news, and that is Lando Calrissian from Solo, played by Donald Glover, is rumored and some people have confirmed that he will be getting his own spin-off Disney Plus TV series, uh, which is really exciting. A lot of people have been clamoring for Solo to have some type of um, future, not just the film. They didn't want to just leave the story to be ending at the film. I personally, people wanted a Solo 2. Some people wanted a Solo TV series. People wanted a Crimson Dawn TV series. And out of this, we do get Lando coming back. And if it's true that Donald Glover is returning, that's huge news for Star Wars. Because while a lot of people didn't really enjoy Solo, everyone unanimously loved uh, Donald Glover's portrayal of Lando. Um, and that is really exciting. Now, I did prefer, I really want to see a Crimson Dawn series. I think that, that is the most interesting series in the case of story, um, because we learned about Crimson Dawn a little bit in that last season of Clone Wars. And then obviously Paul Benny is just in the way of Darth Maul in Solo. So you really want to see Crimson Dawn and you leave the film with Amelia Clark going out to Dathomir to talk with Darth Maul. And I would love to see a Crimson Dawn type of series, but if we're not getting that, Lando is not a bad backup option for me. Um, Glover, in my opinion, one of the more talented guys working in Hollywood today, not just in movies and shows, but you know, music as well, obviously. Um, Atlanta, for me, is one of my favorite comedies in the past 10 years. Um, he, he's such a great actor, and it's good to see him that he's possibly coming back for a TV series. And as of now, guys, you can't really doubt Star Wars television at the moment. Clone Wars was really great. Um, um, but and Rebels was really good. I didn't see Resistance. I heard it was way too childish. And then obviously Mandalorian, which is coming back for a season two. We've heard news now about Obi Wan, Obi Wan series, Cast and Andor series. They're putting a lot of effort into TV shows, and I really enjoy that because you also get people want to complain. Well, I want to see these characters on the big screen, but people don't realize that you might get Lando now for maybe eight hours, depending on how many episodes of television. And that is a lot of time to spend with this character, which is a really good thing, especially for someone like me who loves this character. And not just loves this character, but loves this portrayal of, of Lando Calrissian. Um, this could be a lot of interesting um, side pieces as well. The interesting question is, do we get to see Alden Ehrenreich return as Solo for maybe a cameo or maybe an episode? Um, because really we leave Solo off with Han winning the Falcon over, you know, Sabak, um, and with and Lando losing the Falcon. So we want to know what does Lando do next? Does he run into Han one more time? It doesn't seem like he does, uh, based off of what his interaction with Han was in um, Empire Strikes Back. But I mean, I love Star Wars and I love Lando. And is this my most anticipated series? Probably not. I'm still more excited for Mandalorian and Obi Wan. But I still am really excited to go back into the underworld of Star Wars, something that we've been missing that Rogue One really hinted at. Clone Wars in that middle episodes really hinted at that type of underworld type of stuff. And they could really dive into that with Lando um, until he goes on to Cloud City. And if we can see Cloud City again in present day, that would be fantastic, fantastic stuff. So that's the big news. Lando rumored and some sources have confirmed that Don Glover will be returning as Lando Calrissian for a Disney Plus TV series. And the last bit of news today, my third topic, is Netflix normally doesn't release their numbers for uh, movies and their views, but Netflix has just come out the other day with their top 10 most viewed Netflix original films. Um, and it's a very fascinating list. I've seen eight of the 10 movies. The movies I haven't seen on this list were The Platform and Six Underground. Um, but a lot of movies I was really shocked to see. Extraction is number one, and that makes a lot of sense. Not just is it Chris Hemsworth and the one that Russo Brothers produced and wrote the film, but it takes place in India. So that's a huge fan base and a huge Netflix contributor as well, where that really all together makes a lot of sense. Um, what's also shocking about this list is that The Irishman was the only Oscar bait type of film to make this list. Um, it was in number seven, I believe. And obviously it makes sense. You have Martin Scorsese directing it. You have 
you know, Pacino, De Niro, and Pesci, and Romano, and all these different type of actors in one movie. Um, and it's, you never know when you're going to see that again. So I get why The Irishman's here, but movies like Marriage Story, um, and The Two Popes, and Roma, all missed. Uh, and Dolomite Is My Name, like all these films that were Oscar nominated or trying to become Oscar nominated, all weren't on this list, only The Irishman. And Marriage Story, for me, I loved Marriage Story. I would love to see that in this top 10, but it's not, which is super fascinating, especially when The Irishman is a three hour plus film. The fact that that many millions of views got, it got is pretty spectacular, um, not just because of the actors, but because of the runtime itself. Um, so The Irishman's also on this list. A lot of comedies, as you can see on my top left, The Wrong Missy, which I have a review up already on this YouTube channel. Um, is on this. But the most shocking part is that The Old Guard that came out last week um, for Netflix is in the, the top, the number one, is in the top five uh, since being back. So that's pretty shocking, guys, that The Old Guard, which is a Netflix original that came out last week is number number one on this list. Um, and I mean, that's an amazing top 10 that the old guard can make that top 10 after only being out a week. So who knows how many more millions of views the old guard will get uh, before that end of, before the end of the year, maybe. I wanna see this list come out more often. Uh, I saw, as I said, I saw eight of the 10 movies and streaming guys this upcoming week, movies wise, the Kissing Booth 2 will be out this upcoming Friday, which means I'll be reviewing that here on my YouTube channel this Friday. Uh, if you guys want to tell me your thoughts down below in the comment section, what are your thoughts of Tenet? Do you think Tenet should be coming out in theaters soon or pushed to next year? Lando Calrissian, do you think, are you really excited for Lando? And tell me about your favorite Netflix movies. Did they make this top 10 list or did they not? And are you, are you going to be watching The Kissing Booth this week? Thank you guys so much. We'll see you guys on Friday.